Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Hey, this is Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. This is podcast number thirteen. It is now January twelfth of twenty seventeen, and I'm going to strike while the iron is hot, as they say. I am in a good mood right now. I feel a little bit euphoric. I feel full of energy. I feel uh, like there's many topics I would like to discuss today. One of them is the Meryl Streep Golden Globe Award speech on empathy. And I want to talk about Carrie Fisher and mental health and moods and nutrition. My own personal history of my some of my mental health concerns. The fact that modeling is so good for me because of some of my mental health challenges. Naturism and nudism and being a figure model and diatomaceous earth and how it's cleansing my colon. And I wanna talk about raw cat food and how it is totally raw meat, frozen and freeze dried cat food that has totally transformed the health of my cat Kisun. So welcome, this is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. I love Carrie Fisher and I'm so sad that she passed away at the young age of 60. I will say that I love her for a few different reasons. I love Carrie Fisher's sense of humor I love her honesty about her manic depressive illness that she suffered from, although she turned that into some amazingly funny comedy. And I saw her woman, uh, her one woman show in Seattle called Wishful Drinking, which I think was in 2009. She came here to Seattle and performed that. And I saw it at the Seattle Repertory Theater, and that was great. And I loved that she poked fun at the whole Princess Leia thing, and she talked openly about her manic depressive illness, and she turned that into comedy. And I will say that Meryl Streep's recent speech at the Golden Globe Awards, where she quote, he, she quote, oh my gosh, <laughs> forgive me, she quoted Carrie Fisher and referred to her as my dearly departed friend, Princess Leia, once said, take your broken heart and turn it into art or make it into art take your broken heart make it into art beautiful beautiful quote where she talked about uh, Meryl Streep talked about the importance of empathy and she I thought it was so beautiful the way Meryl Streep segued in um, Hollywood the media the press journalism and immigrants and immigration and how one of the things that makes this country, USA, so fascinating and interesting is the diversity of immigrants we have from all over the world that immigrate here and come here and become American citizens. Whether they're legal or illegal, they make our country more interesting and diverse. So I love what Meryl Streep said about empathy and about the work of actors being an important thing. And it's funny and ironic and paradoxical that sometimes fiction is more true than the news. Like the news is supposed to be true and sometimes it's actually kind of propaganda and fake. And when you go to a really good Hollywood movie with a really good script and really talented actors, they are telling us a either fiction story or they're acting out something based on truth, but they're acting it out and changing the, altering the truth a little bit, but trying to get a message across. So sometimes when you see an actor in a film, it's more honest and true than when you watch the nightly news on mainstream media. So interesting to say that. But I love what she said about empathy and compassion and how she called out the current new president of the United States, Mr. Donald, on making fun of a disabled man. So I'm not going to argue about, um, you know, him saying that he didn't do that or whatever, but that's not the point. The point is that to think it's cool and funny to make fun of somebody or bully somebody or put somebody down and think that that means you're superior is really a sad not very intelligent way of being. So I love that Meryl Streep managed to say that without even saying his name and managed to uh, validate the importance of Hollywood, of the creative process of filmmaking and of journalism and how we need to keep journalists uh, free to report on what's going on freely and openly and not just spread propaganda and fake news and not just manipulate people with the news. So it's very nice to hear. And I'm someone who, I'm an artist myself and a model for other artists. 
And so to me, the value of art is way beyond just entertainment. When I, when I see movies, it's way more than entertainment. I mean, nothing wrong with sitting and being entertained and laughing and living vicariously through the actors in the movie. But at a deep, on a deeper level, what actors and movie and filmmakers are doing and writers, you know, people who write books, people who write scripts, actors on stage performing, even musicians who are telling us stories on stage as they sing, are taking us on a journey and telling us a story. And it's all about connecting human beings and having empathy and compassion for people that are different from you. So to be prejudiced against people who are different that you don't understand from another culture is a sad thing and it's based on fear and competition. And so when Meryl Streep talked about movie, movies being important work, I so much agree with that and that what an honor and a privilege it is for people to be actors and to be able to serve humanity. I mean, that's how I think of it. I think of really great profound movies like Sophie's Choice and 12 Years a Slave is a recent movie that I saw that moved me deeply about the history of slavery and about how people in the North were not black people uh, in the North were not slaves and they were, you know, educated and allowed to have jobs and self-respect and to have uh, free lives doing what they wanted whereas in the south people were slaves and black people were treated like less than you know white people and not smart and treated very abusively and it basically in prison working for other people we know what slavery is but just to see it illustrated in that movie was so intense and so to have empathy at the best at the best movies can help show people something they've never seen before and that they can try to imagine what it's like to be from another culture and to walk in someone else's shoes and to feel what it's like and have some kind of heart connection to somebody that's different from you that you maybe didn't know you had much in common with and then you realize wait a minute most people want to love and be loved. Most people want freedom. Most people want to express themselves and not be a slave to somebody else. Whether it's a slave to a corporation that doesn't pay you enough or a slave to the stock market or a slave to obsessing about the way you look. I mean, there's different kinds of slavery. So I loved Meryl Streep's speech so much, which made me segue into and also, I, I do feel like when an actor wins an award, some people say they shouldn't talk about politics. But to me, an actor, when they win an award, should just get up there and speak from their heart and their mind and whatever they want to say. So I feel like her speech talked about politics, but it was completely related to her work as an actor and completely related to her heart and her soul and her brain and her wisdom. So to me, it's not, I don't really separate politics from art because to me, everything is political. When you're an actor on stage in a film, you are communicating through the mass media. So that is political. It has basically when an actor expresses themselves in a film and a, and a script writer writes a great screenplay Millions of people see this movie and listen to the story and are affected by it mentally and emotionally. So that, that, is, that is very profoundly political. In other words, it affects society at large. When a politician gets on stage and says or does anything, it affects us emotionally and mentally. And when they do policies, it affects us all as well. Well, when an actor's on stage and doing a film, they also affect people emotionally and mentally. And so you can raise people's consciousness with intelligent writing and intelligent scripts and actors and films. And so to me, it's all connected, whether it's the arts and the humanities, whether it's science or medicine, whether it's people getting on stage and talking about nutrition, and whether it's politicians talking about their politics. So there it is. Actors have more freedom, actually. Politicians are trying to sell themselves and sell a message whereas an actor is trying to tell a story about what the writer wrote so in a way actors are more free to be truthful and honest whereas politicians are almost set up to be fake because they're trying to win 
you know, win votes and win elections and basically manipulate people into whatever they want to manipulate them into. So I think that that's all the more reason why we need the arts and not just the politics. So there it is. So to me, the arts and politics are connected and not separate. I don't separate things out like that. Just like mental health and physical health is connected. So I wanted to talk about Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher was open and honest about her mental illness. She had bipolar disorder, which otherwise known as manic depressive illness. And despite that, she was a great writer and a great comedian and a great actor. And she did some really cool roles in films, as we know, you know, Star Wars, among others, when Harry met Sally, she was in all kinds of interesting movies. And I enjoyed that. And I like how honest she was about mental health, her mental health, instead of because there's a stigma, you know, when you admit you're mentally ill, some people judge you and think that you're not as uh, worthy or valuable, or maybe they think they can't trust you if you admit you're you have mental problems. So I love that Carrie Fisher spoke about that honestly and openly. I have been watching interviews with her like Charlie Rose, Carrie Fisher on Charlie Rose and various different shows where she talked about how actually her mental illness in some ways, you know, being manic helped her write. Because when you're when you're depressed, maybe you can't do much of anything. But when you're in your mania phase, you know, then you you can write a whole book in two months. You know, she said she wrote some of her books really fast because she was manic and she had all of this energy and all these great ideas that would just pour through her. So I myself, I'm an artist, I'm a sensitive person, and I'm very moody, and I've always been moody since I was a child. And I wonder, in terms of diagnosticness, I have been told by psychiatric people that I meet the criteria for borderline personality disorder, although I'm a very highly functioning person in that way if I even fit into that category at all, because I don't really believe in labeling myself as a spiritual person. I feel like I am flexible and I'm not like stuck being borderline. I also meet the criteria for cyclothymia, which is on the spectrum of bipolar slash manic depression. But cyclothymia is a little different because when you're manic depressive or bipolar, that means that you go really, really up and you're high and sometimes manic depressive people don't sleep for days. They, they feel like they don't need any sleep. They have tons of energy and they might like have grandiose ideas about themselves and like, you know, fly to Paris and think that they can, you know, do all these amazing things that you really can't do. And they might think they're kind of like Superman or something. And then when you're depressed or if you're an artist, you might create amazing works of art when you're in your manic phase. And then when you're depressed, you might just stay in bed and, and sleep a lot and, you know, either eat too much or not eat at all. So basically you get really high and then really low. Well, cyclothymia is similar to that, except it's rapid cycle moods. And that's, I do think that that kind of fits me because there are people who observe me and say, are you bipolar because I'm so moody and they're worried about me? The truth is, I think I'm cyclothymic. And this is what a psychiatric person has told me. I mean, all they really do to diagnose you, though, with mental illness is to look up, you know, a list of traits in a book. And then if you say yes to enough of those traits and they go, oh, well, then you fit there. You're on the spectrum. The thing is, if you asked me the same questions because I'm so moody, if you asked me every single day for like two months, I might answer differently to these questions. So then you wonder, well, what's the truth if moods constantly fluctuate, you know? I mean, I don't think that I'm set and solid. It's not like if you're diabetic, they can actually test you and say you're definitely diabetic or you're definitely not diabetic, or they can check your blood pressure or your cholesterol and give you a number. But when they try to figure out if you're mentally ill in a certain way, I don't think that's really much of an exact science. Also, by the same token, if you are diabetic, you, some people have reversed type 2 diabetes can actually be reversed or changed into having healthy blood sugar that's stable just by changing what you eat. You know, if you cut out all the junk food and all the carbs and all the sugar and refined sugars and you don't eat like bread and, and cookies and cupcakes and et cetera, you can stabilize your blood sugar. And I know people who have done this. And in fact, my cat, who the vet thought might be diabetic, to make a long story short, I switched his diet 
to a raw, uh, frozen and freeze-dried raw meat diet that I get at the health food pet store. So it's specially formulated for cats. So it has vitamins and minerals and the right balance of nutrients in addition to raw meat. I feed him venison, chicken, turkey, fish, beef, all those different kinds of meats so far. I might try some lamb and some rabbit as well. He's really happy. He's been eating all of his raw, freeze-dried, frozen food that I've been feeding him. His digestion has improved. He now poops in a way that's much healthier. Instead of it being like runny diarrhea, it's it's very firm, dark uh, poo, and he just seems like it easily comes out of him, not to gross you guys out, but my cat basically is peeing and pooping in a way. He, he was drinking tons and tons of water and I was worried about his kidneys. Well, the vet did a blood test on him and said his kidneys are fine. So I think I caught it in time. I've had previous cats that had kidney problems. So I'm happy that now that I feed him raw food and I eliminated all the dry food and I just feed him freeze dried and frozen raw meat diet every day a few times a day I feed him on about three or four different kinds of food to keep the variety to keep him entertained but also to keep the diversity in his diet and he is not drinking uh, water constantly he's mostly getting his water from his his food because I add water to his frozen and freeze-dried meat food and he drinks it basically with meat um, you know what it's kind of like a gravy uh, texture but there's no junk in it. There's no like wheat gluten or corn or soy. It's just meat and different vitamins and minerals and facillin husks and flaxseed, but no like vegetable oil or, you know, they put all kinds of weird stuff in cat food. It's, it's kind of like, you know, eating TV dinner and canned food all day for us, you know, to feed your cat that. So I feed him what I think is really, really healthy for him. So it's really only naturopathic vets, too, that advise this. But um, uh, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, my cat is, I've been testing his blood, uh, his urine sugar levels, and they're, they've been normal every day. So I'm pretty sure that he's not diabetic, but I'm going to make sure. And um, I so I highly recommend a, a frozen, uh, freeze-dried raw meat diet for your dog or cat. But, you know, talk to your vet about it. But some vets don't advise it. They're afraid of the bacteria. The thing is, is that there's a, a lady online, Dr. Karen Becker, who's a naturopathic vet, and she talks all about raw food diets and, and the, the yes, the, the, the do's and don'ts. You know, uh, salmonella is a bacteria that's actually in cats' digestive system sometimes normally, and it doesn't hurt them the way it hurts us. So basically, cats can eat uh, bacteria in raw meat. That's good. Not that you should leave it lying around. You have to be careful. And also if you freeze meat for at least three days, it kills certain bacteria. That's not good. And so that's a safe way to do it. But I also feed him just fresh little small batches at a time and he eats it all. So I don't let it sit around all day for hours or anything like that. But again, cats and dogs have stronger digestive systems than we do. It's a lot more acidic than what humans have. So they can basically handle bacteria that would make us sick. You know, they go out and eat raw, um, you know, mice and rats and squirrels and rabbits, you know, and birds. And they don't get sick from that. And they eat the whole thing, including the feathers and the fur. So there it is. So my cat's health is really, really, really improved. And I will say that my health actually has really, really improved since I started three years ago, I stopped eating um, wheat and gluten. And so I don't eat very many carbs and I mostly eat um, beans and I eat some meat and fruits and vegetables and I eat uh, beans and nuts and seeds, but I don't eat any hardly any grains. I eat occasional gluten-free oatmeal with flaxseed, chia seed, and hemp seed added. And a new thing that I've added to my diet for 2017 is diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth food grade. It's the kind that you get at the health food store in the supplement section. It's 100% diatomaceous earth, nothing else added to it because they do sell it at like home uh, garden stores uh, as a pest killer that you sprinkle in your yard and you can kill pests that way. But that's not the kind that you eat. That is not safe to eat. I get the kind that is at the health food store in the supplement section and it's designed for human consumption. You can also feed it to your cat. 
They also have diatomaceous earth. It basically comes in three different forms. The one kind is the industrial kind that you can use to clean your pool and to and don't eat it. It's dangerous to eat, probably poison, as well as to sprinkle out on your in your lawn. That's one kind, that's the, the industrial kind or the commercial kind. And then there's the kind that they sell at pet food stores. And I'm not sure if you're supposed to eat that because I think it says it's 22% of something else and only like 78 or 80% diatomaceous earth. So the kind I get is the 100% food grade, which is 100% diatomaceous earth and nothing else. And so it's safe and easy to eat it. You put a teaspoon in some water and you stir it up and you drink it. And it tastes kind of like clay. It tastes kind of like clay water. And it has kind of a chalky texture. And my cat, I put a teeny bit in his food and mix it with water and his raw meat diet and he's eating it. And based on what I'm seeing with my digestive system, my body is cleaning out. My intestines, I think, are cleaning out. I even saw a substance, not to gross you guys out, I'm going to talk about my bowel movement just for a second. The other day, because I generally eat really healthy, I exercise and I eat fiber, and so my body eliminates pretty well, I think. But I tend to be a little bloated in the belly area, and I have extra fat on that part of my body. My belly is where I gain weight, you know? And... um which is okay, a little fat is fine. I think we're way too obsessed with being skinny in this culture. But the thing is, I wanna be as fit and healthy as I can. And I ended up losing 40 pounds going off uh, wheat because I was addicted to wheat and it was bad for me on many levels. So I don't do that anymore. But I also, um, the diatomaceous earth, I saw something in my bowel movement the other day and I rinsed it off and took it out and it looked like a little worm. Now, some people say, some people say it's hype, but some people say diatomaceous earth can kill parasites and worms in both humans and cats. And after what I saw come out of me, I think I believe it. I don't know if this was just a piece of mucus coming out of me, but it was kind of worm looking and it was all rubbery. The texture was rubbery and it was kind of an off white color and rubbery. I actually took a picture of it, but I didn't publish it anywhere online because I didn't want to gross people out. But I kept it for my own uh, private collection just to see what's going on with my digestive system. And I will say I looked in the mirror today and my lower, uh, my lower groin area by my pubic uh, hair is flatter. And I push on it and it feels flat. It feels like I'm feeling my my bones and my muscles and my organs. And I feel like there's something that's, you know, I'm cleaning myself out. I really do feel like diatomaceous earth is cleaning me. So try it for yourself if you want. Go ahead and talk to your doctor about it. I think it's perfectly safe. There's different people that say different things on it. But I, I came to this conclusion myself, not with a doctor. I went online and researched it and read about it. And you just take it you know, real slow. And I, I've been using a teaspoon every morning in some uh, uh, filtered, well, I get special water from the, the well, uh, an artesian well. So there's no chlorine and no fluoride in the water that I drink and there's natural minerals in it. And I put about a teaspoon of diatomaceous earth and I mix it up and it looks like cloudy, cloudy water and it tastes kind of like clay, smells kind of like clay. And I feel like it's cleaning my body out. It, it supposedly can kill parasites and worms in your body and can help. Um, basically, it's kind of like it helps clean your intestines out. And it has silica in it, which is supposed to be good for your hair, skin, and nails. Some people think it's really weird stuff and they're afraid of it. But my experience with it, I've been taking it every day now for about 10 days, maybe 11 days. And it feels, I feel really good. It feels like it's energizing me. I feel like, like it's calming me and energizing me. And I feel like it's good for my digestive system. So I think it's too soon to tell. I have pretty healthy hair, but I wouldn't mind if my hair was even healthier. And my, my fingernails, I've noticed as I get older, I'm 48 now. My fingernails are not quite as strong as they used to be and they break more easily. So I'm hoping that the silica in the diatomaceous earth will make my hair, skin, and nails even better and healthier and stronger. It's supposed to be good for your bones. I mean, there's many, many things. Look it up. Diatomaceous earth. Look that up. It's, it's supposed to be good for many things. And again, some people think it's hype and some people think it's dangerous and some people think it's legit. I think it's legit. For me, it's legit. 
So thank you for listening. So I was going to say, I think that my mood swings would fall in the category. They've told me, the psychiatric people have told me, uh, cyclothymia. So right now I have a lot of energy. My moods fluctuate every single day, every hour, basically. I can go up and down, up and down all day long. Some days I'm up most of the day. Some days I'm down most of the day. But generally, my moods fluctuate every hour, maybe even every five minutes. So it can be kind of exhausting, which is why I kind of love and also have OCD. So I have like obsessive thoughts and repetitive thoughts in my head. And I'm constantly looking at my calendar to make sure my schedule is okay. And I'm constantly checking my bank account to make sure everything's fine with that. So I'm kind of OCD. And part of the reason why I love being a figure model is because I show up and I get to sit quietly and be still while they draw and paint and I earn money. But it's, it's so I like it because I'm earning money and it makes me feel safe and secure. But also it's just nice to have permission to sit quietly and try to calm my mind. And so I feel like it's, it's like I'm getting paid to meditate. So it's quite nice. So my cyclothymia it, it seems to work well for modeling. I also go around and deliver groceries and I like to do that. But you know, I work alone by myself. And what else? So basically, I'm just acknowledging and I don't know, I was going to say my childhood in some ways was kind of difficult. We moved around a lot. And there was marriages and divorces and just different complicated things happening. And my parents had me when they were really young and they were still trying to grow up and figure things out. So I didn't get quite as much of uh, stable attention as I wanted. So I didn't feel real secure as a, as a kid. And so I don't know how much of my brain chemistry issues are just a normal response to having a challenging childhood and inconsistencies in my childhood that made me feel unstable and how much of it was I was born with a certain kind of brain chemistry. So maybe even if my parents were absolutely perfect parents in every way and very secure and still together and stable, maybe I would still have mood swings. In fact, I think I probably would still have mood swings, but it wouldn't be as severe. So I feel like my mental health challenges are probably a combination of the childhood challenges that I faced as well as the kind of brain I was born with, which is, you know, I have a highly sensitive nervous system. You know, I don't drink or smoke or do any drugs, partly because I, I find it disorienting. And, you know, my brain is already moody enough. And so if I try to smoke or drink or do drugs, it just makes me feel really like not safe. So I don't do any drugs. I don't even take medication. So there it is, my talk on mental health and... um. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed my monologue. I'll see you next week. This is Goddess Kring, podcast number 13. Go to shannonkringen.com. Write me with questions or comments. I'll see you next week or I'll, I'll speak with you next week. And shannonkringen.com. Email me and thank you for listening. Enjoy your day or night. Hey, this is Shannon Kringen. You're listening to the Goddess Kring podcast. I wanted to just say something about mental health and something that I just experienced. I'm going to talk a little bit about the topic of suicide and um, self-esteem and mental health. So if that's a topic that you don't want to hear about, please don't listen to this. Um, I'm not going to say anything awful, though. I'm just going to speak honestly about how I feel and what I think about suicide and mental health and bullying and social media. Um, I just feel a little bit nauseous right now because somebody posted a link on my Facebook feed that was an article about a 12-year-old girl who committed suicide by hanging herself from a tree. And at first I was hoping that the story was fake. You know how a lot of news is sort of like fake drama just to freak people out or stir up, you know, drama and emotions. This video seemed to be real. It was a 12-year-old girl who apparently was depressed and was bullied by other kids or peers her own age. I don't know what her family or home life was like. Apparently she had a few siblings. I don't know if she was unhappy at home, but she was only 12 years old. She was a beautiful girl and she tied a rope to a tree and she, she live streamed videoed it on her social media websites and she just kept crying in the video and saying I'm sorry and mentioning all the names of people who knew her I'm sorry I wasn't good enough I'm sorry I don't deserve to live I'm sorry I wasn't a good friend to you she just kept saying she was sorry and she was sorry and she was sorry and then she cried and then she 
basically stepped off the bucket and hung herself. And then 10 minutes later, you can hear somebody calling her name. I guess somebody from her family was trying to figure out where she was and they called her name and then you hear her cell phone ringing. It's a very haunting video and who knows, it might be fake, but I'm pretty sure it's real. But it doesn't matter if it's real or fake. That the, the, real, the reality of the matter is that people do commit suicide on a daily basis and I am somebody who has some mental health issues. I have mood swings. I have OCD and depression and anxiety and various issues and a tendency towards borderline personality disorder, although I'm very high functioning and I don't cut myself at all ever. Um, but I do have sort of a self-hating dark side of my brain that is very hard on myself. And I was bullied and picked on in school. Um, but I will say that I feel like two things need to happen. I feel like when, when kids these days have all this social media and it's easy to create drama and create, you know, bully other people or create fake identities or, you know, the, the bullying is to a whole nother level. I mean, when I was a kid, I grew up, I was born in 1968. So when I was in junior high and high school, it was like the 70s and the 80s. And so kids would pick on each other just by, you know, verbally calling each other names following each other around, saying sarcastic things to each other. Gee, I wish I could be your friend. Gee, I wish I was as cool as you. I wish I could dress just like you. That's the kind of things people would say to me. Or people would say I was a scum. I was sort of like a, a shy, hippie-esque kind of kid that didn't want to conform and dress the way other kids dress. So I had my own creative way of dressing. I was kind of shy. I was just kind of a different little kid and teenager and a little bit rebellious most of my friends were kind of misfits, um, like me. Uh, I had a few close friends, but not a whole lot. I definitely wasn't popular in high school. My mom put me in alternative school for part of my junior high, and nobody picked on each other in that school. Everybody's individuality was appreciated in the school, the alternative schools that I went to. But when I got back into public school, people were meaner, and kids want each other to conform and be normal. And people like to make fun of people who are different. Well, I'll say about bullying, you know, seeing this girl commit suicide, I kind of wish I hadn't watched the video, but I was curious and I wanted to see if it was real. And I wanted to just acknowledge reality that sometimes people are hard on themselves and they give up. But some people are saying cruel things about this girl, like, oh, she was such a wimp. She shouldn't have given up. She let the bullies win by killing herself, etc. And that is such a mean, judgmental attitude to have. Because the, f the fact of the matter is that this poor girl didn't love herself enough to not kill herself. She decided to just escape. And she was, I guess, in a lot of pain, feeling very sad, feeling like she was a failure. I mean, she was believing her own negative self-talk, basically. And I was just going to say that I have felt suicidal many, many times, like from maybe the age of... I don't remember the first time I thought about escaping and maybe I was probably 15. I don't think I thought about that when I was younger, uh, but I did feel very sad and withdrawn and I did feel like giving up on having friends and I did feel like, you know, I basically retreated. My, my method of dealing with being bullied was to just hide and to just retreat into a dream world and just get lost in a world of music and TV and roller skating by myself around my neighborhood. I grew up partly in San Diego and then moved to Whidbey Island with my mom when I was a little kid. And my way of dealing with bullies, I didn't really deal well with bullies. I didn't really know how to stand up to these people. Um, but I retreated into art and music. You know, I, I will say that TV, art and music and exercise saved me. You know, I retreated. Thankfully, my parents are both nice people and they didn't pick on me. Both my parents are critical in some ways, and my mom married a few different people, and there was lots of drama with marriages and divorces and moving around a lot, and that was very stressful. A couple of my stepdads were kind of cruel to me, verbally abusive perhaps. I've also dated a couple guys that were kind of abusive, but I don't want to get into that. But right now I'm in a happy, healthy relationship with a nice man, but I just wanted to say the point about suicide you know, if you feel suicidal, please call the 24-hour the, the, uh, crisis clinic. I think in Seattle, it's 206-461-3222. I call that sometimes, actually, just to talk to somebody 
When I don't feel like bothering family or friends, if I'm upset, I call them just to get some support. But I was just going to say that I feel like two things need to happen. We need to encourage kids that bullying is not cool and bullying is not okay. You know, being a bully is not a cool thing to do. And I think it should be taken seriously. And kids should not be taught that they have to just be tough and put up with bullies. It's true, though, if someone is bullying you, try to find people who love you and support you and focus on that. And don't let the bullies win by harming yourself. I mean, it's true. You know, I did my Goddess Kring TV show, and I did have people make fun of me who didn't like what I was doing because I'm kind of a, an eccentric person and some people just like to make fun of me for whatever reason. Uh, and I did have people make jokes uh, on public websites saying, you know, I hope she dies in a, in a burning building. I hope she dies in a fire. I mean, they said this about me, about Goddess Kring. They don't really know the Shannon Kringen, the real me, Shannon, but they were thinking of Goddess Kring, the persona that I put on my TV show, which I would dance around nude and I would body paint myself and talk about sexuality and talk about mental health. And I would just talk about everything off the top of my head, political ideas I had, you know, just random anything, personal, professional, public, political, etc. And some people just were weirded out by what I was saying and doing on my public TV show. And I understand that. But I also think that there's two things you need to learn to um, be strong within yourself and do what you believe in and not listen to people who bully you. And that also includes not listening to your own inner demons, your own voice in your head that is hard on you and negative and is self-hating. So basically watching this t video of a 12 year old girl hanging herself from a tree and dying, you know, committing suicide, basically successfully, she succeeded in doing that. It's sad. I wish that she had failed. I wish that people had found her before that happened. Uh, may she rest in peace. I think she lived in Georgia or somewhere in the United States. So it's very, very sad. So I will say, I don't know how many people commit suicide on this planet every day, but it's very, very sad. And I wish that people would help each other. It reminds me to not be so hard on myself, you know, listening to this girl crying and saying she was sorry and that she wasn't good enough and that she didn't deserve to live. It reminded me of the my own voice in my head that is very mean and hard on myself. You know, I think I'm a failure. I think, you know, in some ways I'm really smart and I'm talented with my art. And I've built a freelance career with figure modeling. And now I deliver groceries sometimes part-time because I'm a little tired of, of chasing after every single modeling job I can get. And I find that when I balance out my grocery delivery job with my store auditing, with my uh, modeling for other artists job with doing my art, it helps me appreciate all the different things I do even more. But sometimes I'm very hard on myself. Like I have a bachelor's degree in liberal studies from Antioch University in Seattle. I also have a graphic design certificate from Seattle Central Community College, but that was over 20 years ago before computers took over. So I basically, I learned how to do graphic design with an X-Acto knife and rapidograph pens and illustration board and, you know, like T-squares. And, you know, we didn't do everything on computer. So now it's much easier and much different to do graphic design. I learned it the hard way. I do have a lot of good graphic design skills, but I've never tried to get a job doing that. And I've never tried to get a job with my bachelor's degree. I don't even know, you know, I thought about getting a master's degree, but I didn't get into a couple, I applied to a couple different um, master's degree MFA programs. And I got rejected by both of them, which was kind of a bummer for me. Uh, I guess I just wasn't what they're looking for. One of the schools, I think, rejected me because of a rumor somebody spread about me uh, because I made the mistake of saying where I was going to apply online on my social media websites. And I do have some haters out there. So I think somebody actually spread a rumor. I'm not even going to say out loud what it was, but somebody spread a rumor that I was accused of something very illegal and dangerous, which is was totally false and untrue. And it really scared the heck out of me. So it made me think, okay, I need to be really careful about what I share online, you know, not too much personal stuff. But I've always been somebody who's wanted to share in a public way. 
And I, so I'm talking right now about suicide. I have never tried to commit suicide, but I've thought about committing suicide many, many times since about the age of 15 for reasons, for many reasons. One is because I have a tendency to have borderline personality, which means that I have a fragile sense of self and I have a hard time with boundaries. I feel like I'm either too clingy and close to somebody or I push other people away and I just want to be independent and do my own thing. I'm more of a withdrawn type of a person and I mostly take things out on myself. So I do tend to panic. And so basically I have mental health patterns and I'm in therapy. Don't worry. I have a therapist and I have a mom and a dad that I can call and I have a boyfriend and I, I live by myself with my cat and I feel very safe where I live and I have a nice landlord and I have a a good job as a model. And, you know, my life is actually going pretty well right now, but I still do struggle with negative self-talk, with self-hatred, with feeling like I'm a failure, you know, like I could be doing a lot better than I'm doing, not giving myself credit for how well I'm actually doing and realizing, you know, I'm comparing myself to people that are way more successful than me and I don't even know what I want. I used to think I wanted to be famous, etc. I do still want to communicate in the media in some way. I mean, like here I am recording my voice and putting it on, you know, public you know, in the public airwaves, on Hollow Earth Radio, Patreon, Mixcloud, Bandcamp, YouTube. I mean, I'm spreading this message everywhere on my social media websites. And if you watch, if you listen to my podcast on YouTube, you will see slideshows of my art and my photography. So thank you for watching me on YouTube, if that's what you're doing right now. Hello, this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. This is my podcast. Every week I do a 60-minute podcast. For 15 years, I did a public access TV show called Goddess Kring, where I did improvisational monologues. It was kind of a a video diary. Maybe sometimes it was a cry for help. I don't know, but I I have certain mental issues. Um, But I'm also like an intelligent, sensitive person. I love plants and animals. I love to travel. I have interesting friends online that I talk to. I mean, in, in some ways, my life is very good. And kitty, kitty, kisun. And my kitty's meowing. Soon. And I just switched my cat to a raw food diet and he's really happy and he's responding well to it. So I just wanted to talk about um, bullying and how kids bully each other and even adults bully each other online. So I was going to say, what was I going to say? I was going to say that I think two things need to happen. When somebody commits suicide, partly because they've been bullied, We need to teach people to be stronger and not let bullies win. But I think that we also need to realize that bullying is a serious problem and that it's really not okay and that it definitely triggers people that have mental health issues. So I'm somebody who has contemplated suicide many times. Mostly it's an escape fantasy. Sometimes I feel angry at people who bullied me in school. And I feel angry that my parents are not the perfect superhero parents that I want. But my parents are actually pretty good people, pretty decent human beings, you know, sensitive and raised me pretty well in some ways. And in some ways, maybe they just couldn't do certain things. They did the best they could. And I'm still working on forgiving uh, my parents and forgiving myself for not being as perfectly great as I want to be. But I'll say that we need to do both. We need to support each other and be kind to each other and help each other out if somebody seems like they're struggling. And also, if you see somebody bullying other people, make sure to tell them that that's really not cool and that that's really not okay. Uh, I feel like people can sometimes egg each other on when somebody threatens suicide. Sometimes people think it's a never cry wolf, which just makes the person feel even worse. You know, because if someone feels suicidal, they should be honest about it, I think, and talk to somebody about it, preferably, you know, somebody professional and safe to talk to, not just blurt it out on Facebook or whatever. Um, And in fact, I have said things like that on Facebook. And then I had people send the police to my house, which was really, really bad. And so it made me think, okay, I'll never do that again. But I didn't mean to scare people. But sometimes when I feel suicidal, it's an escape fantasy. It's that I just want the pain to end. And I just want to escape and just disappear. And then other times I feel angry, like I want to prove to people 
how upset I am by killing myself. And then that would prove to them, you know, I'm talking about this not to scare anybody. I don't feel suicidal at all right now. I'm actually doing really well. I have anxiety and depression and mood swings, and I still have to deal with that on a daily basis sometimes. But I basically feel pretty happy in my life. I have a nice boyfriend, a nice place to live. I love my cat. I have my parents. You know, I have my my business, my artwork. I mean, I have a lot of great things in my life, and I'm and I see a therapist uh, every week or every two weeks. But basically, I sometimes am very hard on myself. And so, hopefully, whoever you are listening to this, hopefully, this is helping you in some way and inspiring you in some way to be kinder to yourself and kinder to other people. People can bully each other. People can also bully themselves. Like my biggest enemy is probably my own little inner Darth Vader that's in my own head. So I basically, the only positive thing about me watching this video of a 12-year-old girl hanging herself from a tree and basically succeeding in committing suicide, again, may she rest in peace. It's so, so, so sad. She was a beautiful young girl who had a lot of potential and I'm sorry that she didn't love herself enough to not um, give up and let her dark side basically take over and end her life and I'm sad that nobody found her in time to save her Uh, but I will say that the positive of watching that video for me and reading things said about her was to remind myself to not be so hard on myself. You know, when you're hard on yourself and you're comparing yourself to some perfect ideal that you think you should or shouldn't be, it's very sad. I mean, I have a double whammy. I have a voice in my head that says that it's greedy and narcissistic to be too successful. And in fact, I have had people call me a narcissist online, which I think is horrible because I do take a lot of self-portraits. And it's partly because I'm I'm a photogenic person and I'm a model and I like to look good and I like to take pictures where I look good. But it's also that I'm a little bit insecure and I want to keep proving that I'm, look at me, I'm pretty, look at me, I'm good, look at me, I'm a, I'm a good model, look at me, I'm a good photographer. So it's partly me just trying to prove that. But then I think, well, what is a narcissist? Is a, nar- a narcissist someone who's stuck up and thinks they're better than other people? That's one kind of narcissist. Another kind, and they're so self-involved, they don't even realize they're self-involved. There's another kind of narcissist, which is somebody who is insecure and wants to constantly prove something. Now, I'm more like that. If I'm a narcissist, I'm the kind that feels insecure and like they want, like I want to prove that I'm pretty enough or prove that I'm photogenic or prove that I'm Like the the truth is actually when other people take photos of me, I usually don't look as good because I'm afraid to ham it up in front of other people because I'm thinking that's narcissistic. But I have no trouble at all taking pictures of myself. So that's another whole nother story. But it's just basically watching this video of somebody commit suicide. It just reminded me of, oh my gosh, please don't be hard on yourself, you know, to myself and also to you, the audience, whoever's listening to me right now. Thank you so much for tuning in. I welcome questions and comments. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. Um, Please don't be so hard on yourself. If you're somebody who's hard on yourself and you think you could be doing better than you're doing, please try to give yourself credit for every good thing that you've done or whatever you're grateful for. Please try to focus on that and go ahead and acknowledge whatever's upsetting you or bothering you about yourself or your life. But try to emphasize to yourself just for your own well-being and your own self-care. Focus on what you're grateful for. Focus on what's already working in your life. Focus on, you know, give yourself credit, basically. Pat yourself on the back for for where you've come, how you've come, you know, that you're, that you're surviving. Because, you know, life on this planet is difficult in some ways. And, um, you know, there's, there's poverty, there's pollution, there's violence, there's, there's injustice, there's so many things going on, there's war, there's, there's um, people getting poisoned by bad food. I mean, there's lots of really scary kind of things going on. And then despite all of that, there's amazing things happening on this planet. And simultaneously, there's so many good things happening and so many bad things happening all at the same time. And it's a little overwhelming. So I will just say that The point of this monologue is what? Is to say, please don't be too hard on yourself. And if you're somebody who's bullying other people, please, 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 please realize that you're hurting yourself if you're hurting other people. If you're making fun of other people to make yourself feel better, that is so sad and it is just an awful thing to do. And if somebody feels suicidal, 
Don't don't tell them, oh, shut up, you're just a drama queen or, oh, you're just never cry wolf. I mean, I, I can understand why if somebody's constantly saying they want to kill themselves that, you know, it, it can upset other people around them and it can make you feel like they're just saying that to create drama or make you feel sorry for them. But think of how humiliating, it's humiliating to say that you want to kill yourself. I mean, that's humiliating. I do not feel suicidal right now, but I'm just saying that I have throughout my lifetime felt that way. And I have never attempted it. And I always talk myself out of anything. I've thought about getting sleeping pills or jumping off a building, but that would be horrible. I don't want somebody to find me. I don't want to traumatize other people. And I'm also afraid of death because I do feel I'm a little bit agnostic, but I mostly believe that your soul continues and that when you pass away, your soul continues. There's also a movie called The Bridge which is about people who tried and some succeed at jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco and commit suicide. And some of the people in this video, um, it's a documentary, so it's real footage, uh, are saved in time. Some people actually talk them out and grab them and make them not jump off the bridge. Some of the people actually do jump off the bridge and their bodies are never found and or they die and their bodies are found. One guy who I think was manic depressive or bipolar. He is now a quadriplegic. He jumped off the bridge and he survived. He miraculously, he, he now he goes around and he speaks and he tells people, don't jump off, don't try to commit suicide. You're probably going to regret it because he said he went to the bridge and he jumped. I mean, he thought about it for a while and then he jumped and he said, as soon as his feet left the guardrail, he was like, oh no, I don't want to do this. Uh-oh, now it's too late. Now I'm going to die. And so I guess he, I think he made sure to land feet first. And maybe that's what saved him. He he landed feet first, I think. And he broke a whole bunch of his bones and he ended up quadriplegic. You know, he was paralyzed from the waist down, I'm pretty sure. And he's in a wheelchair and he, sh you know, shattered his pelvis and he, I think his lungs collapsed or one of his lungs collapsed and his eardrums got, you know, his, his body got really messed up, but he survived. And now he really wants to live. And now he goes around and he gives speeches and tells people his story as a way to inspire people to not attempt suicide and to do something else to get some help and to try to find a way to love themselves and love their life and try to try to build a life that you love and do it for yourself as well as your family and your friends. So this is something, this is a topic I really care about. I care about nutrition. I care about mental health. So I guess I'm into healing and health, mental health, physical health, etc. So I just wanted to share that about suicide and watching that video today of a 12 year old girl and that movie called The Bridge is a really good documentary. It's a controversial documentary, but the people that made it actually ended up saving a lot of people because when they were filming the bridge, they called 911 several times when they saw somebody that was maybe going to jump and those people, some of those people were saved. Some of those people jumped before they, and then they filmed it. They basically had the cameras rolling, but they would call 911 when they saw, okay, this person is going to jump, let's call, let's get him help. And they got him help. Some of the people, they couldn't help in time and they filmed them jumping off the bridge, which, you know, sounds kind of like they're exploiting these people. But the thing is, the purpose of the, of the film was to educate people and to help, help people be aware of the reality of what people are doing and what can we do to, to prevent suicide? What can we do for suicide prevention? What can we do Maybe talking about it out loud is a good thing because there is a stigma, you know, to being mentally ill, to, to feeling like you want to harm yourself. People get mad when you say that. People are like, you know, shut up, you know, you're just saying that to create drama, never cry wolf, or you should check yourself into a hospital. I mean, that's another reason why I've never attempted suicide because I'm afraid of, I don't want to go to the hospital because of the medical bills and because I don't want to, I don't want them to give me drugs. I'm not on any medication. I've been on various antidepressants and none of them helped me at all. In fact, one of them gave me some weird side effects. And so I just stopped all medications. And so now what I do is I take ashwagandha and different vitamins and minerals and I exercise and I try to eat as healthy as I can. And then I deal with my 
Uh, I have a therapist and we deal with, um, she gives me handouts on skills I can practice when I start getting upset or panicking and having some kind of weird anxiety mood swing type thing happen. And what really helps me to be stable is work. I love to work. I sometimes think I work too much, but the structure of working as a model and even delivering groceries and doing my artwork and updating my website every day, it helps me feel a sense of purpose and a sense of organization, a sense of structure. So I was just going to say that I think it's good actually to talk about these things, to talk about mental health, to talk about the fact that sometimes people feel suicidal or they have an escape fantasy. I think what's what the desire for suicide is, is extreme health self-hatred at times, but also the pain is so great, you just want the pain to end and you want to escape. It's like a fantasy that if you were, you know, if you could just pass away, that you wouldn't feel any more pain, which is true, you won't feel any pain, but the thing is, you won't feel any joy either. So you won't feel a sense of relief if you're dead, because you won't feel anything at all. So we don't really know. And another thing that stops me from ever contempting suicide is, is my spiritual feeling that my gut feeling is that we, our soul continues. And so that if you kill your body, your soul will continue. And then you will have to just continue learning whatever you're afraid to learn or you're avoiding learning. So it's better just to stick around. And it's better to like shave your head and quit your job and, you know, do anything and, you know, take, take a trip, go to Paris. I mean, do something. Don't kill yourself. Instead, do something else that's not harmful. Like if you're miserable, quit your job, move, confide in somebody, tell them how you feel, do something that's not going to harm yourself. So that's kind of my advice to myself. So there is a crisis line, 24 hour crisis clinic hotline here in Seattle. It's 206-461-3222. I even have that number memorized. So I'm just saying that in, in case anybody listening to this is in crisis, please call the crisis hotline or look up a crisis hotline in your local area. Um, but I'm just being honest about some of the things that I've been through. Again, I've thought about suicide a lot, but I've never attempted it. And I don't feel that way right now at all. And I'm very, um, I have a very stable living situation and a job, a good job. I have several jobs. So I'm pretty much guaranteed a job because I work at so many different places. You know, unless our entire society collapses, I'm pretty much guaranteed work probably for forever. So until I retire when I'm like 70 or whatever I'm going to do. So I'm 48 right now. So I got like another 22 years of probably working full time. I probably will work though for the rest of my life. I really do like to work. I I hope I don't have to work full time financially for the rest of my life. But I, I just, I like structure. I like being of service to others. I like helping other people. I like helping myself. I like earning money. So I really like to, I love to work. So thank you for listening. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. And this is my podcast. I do a new one every single week. Please write me with questions or comments. My website is shannonkringen.com. I am on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Flickr, YouTube. These podcasts I put onto Bandcamp, Mixcloud, Hollow Earth Radio, Patreon. I think that's mostly it. And I, I share links on my Google Plus and my, my uh, live journal, my WordPress, my Tumblr, uh, my LinkedIn, my Instagram, everywhere. So I have these all over the place. So if you just Google Shannon Kringen, S-H-A-N-N-O-N-K-R-I-N-G-E-N or Goddess Kring, you will find photos and artwork that I have done. And you can email me with questions or comments And I offer my artwork, my photos, and my audio recordings under a Creative Commons license, so it's free to share. So please freely share my photos, my videos, my music. If you go to ShannonKringen.com or Goddess Kring Bandcamp, you will see I have a bunch of MP3s that are free. Um, So there it is. I love to share. So thank you for listening. Life is a gift, and... I am so sad that people commit suicide and I wish that I could do something to help these people. It is everyone's choice if they stay here or not, but I just want to be a voice out there that is supportive and says that you can, you can hang on and you can, 
If you want to, you can find a reason to stay here and try not to be hard on yourself. That's my biggest advice is people get so hard on themselves and think they're a failure and then that just snowballs down the hill into the dark side and I've been there. So, okay, thanks for listening. Goddess Kring Radio. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring Radio, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring.